Vittorio Veneto. The Tech Tree Italian battleship has arrived at Tier 7 and is ready for you to test her sap secondaries and fuel smoke generator. Iosona Durka. Benvenute nelle leggende. Sleek, fast, dangerous are words that come to mind when considering some Italian ships, <laughs> Veneto being one of them. The sister ship to Roma, she comes to Legends with just enough to set her apart from her sister. Now, as secondary ships go in Legends now, competition is pretty stiff, begging the question, does Veneto have what it takes to compete with Bismarck, Brandenburg, and Massachusetts? Well, stick around, let's find out. As for the ship setup, the choice for me seemed rather obvious. Full secondaries, right? Let's see what these SAP secondaries could do. So, secondary and battery mod in slot 1, prop mod, target acquisition, and main battery mod 3. Now that was the setup at the making of this video. You should really consider damage control module in slot 2 because you will be playing closer in and you also have a smaller HP pool than you might be used to. But yes, during this gameplay I was using the prop mod. Now the commander. I did test Azerlane Latorio, but of course with this being a secondary ship we ended up sticking with the free commander, D. Ravel. Inspirations? Von Hipper. You could use Haruna if you had her. However, I felt that the guns needed a bit of love, so we used Cunningham to boost the Sigma, while everything else was secondary battery focused. Now, let's set up the game in the background before we get any farther. We spawned in the middle on Trap, and mostly the only thing on my mind here was to get in close and to test the secondaries out for you guys. Their team essentially ignored this middle part of the map, so that opened up a slow push for me through the middle, and I took some time to get some cross shots on both flanks as we moved in. So, Veneto. This is Roma's sister ship. Besides the obvious differences, Veneto has lower sigma than the Roma, so that means her shells tend to not group up as well. If you thought brawling Roma's accuracy was bad, <laughs> <laughs> Just wait. The lower sigma value is what prompted me to use Cunningham. Other subtle differences between the ships. Well, the tech tree ship, the NATO, has around one kilometer better secondary range. She has an extra heal. She has way better HE shells. They deal 700 more damage apiece. She's around one knot faster and has a tenth of a second faster rudder shift. Now the Roma, for her part, she has a slightly better heal, not by a lot. She has a faster main battery reload, and of course her main gun accuracy is going to be a little bit better. So Roma, all around is going to be better with the main guns, and then Veneto has her, her little bonuses and perks as well. Now the obvious differences would be Veneto having the exhaust smoke and SAP secondaries. SAP, of course, means semi-armor piercing shells. They are kind of a hybrid between HE and AP, and for the uh, purposes of this video, that's probably about as in-depth as we're going to get. They pin more armor than high explosive shells, but they do not cause fires, and they tend to ricochet a lot less frequently than normal armor piercing shells. If you were interested in more information on this, there is an awesome video made by World of Warships uh, by Wargaming, that I can link below that explains it very, very well. Statistics wise, the Veneto. Compared to the rest of the pack, she has a little below average health pool, but she does come with superb torpedo protection and that comes in handy. The armor scheme is not bad at all. She can be pretty tanky for a couple of reasons. The superstructure is pretty small. And this is a great contrast to American and German battleships, where you can lose so much of your health from superstructure damage. Uh, the Roma, the Veneto, they have a spaced section between the outer belt and the citadel. And I would say things to watch out for. The little stepped portion on the stern of the ship can sometimes catch shells if you're kiting away. So just something to keep in mind. 
gun reload for the Veneto is definitely one thing to keep an eye on. As 380s or 381s, or 15 inch guns, whatever, however you want to see it, these are the slowest reloading at tier 7. 28.3 seconds is what I have, and that's with main battery mod and a level 16 to D-Revel. So with such a slow reload, this really cuts uh, down on the DPM quite a bit from the main guns, making it tough to deal a lot of damage. Just for a comparison's sake, uh, the Buff Guard and the Bismarck, they both have 15-inch guns, 380s, and they reload in about 20 seconds. So 8 seconds difference. Now, you know, the Italian shells, they also have very high shell velocity, they fly fast, it's easy to aim them, and that is better for them, but sometimes that can also lead to overpins. Okay, moving on. The AA rating is not great at all. It's mm, one of the worst at tier 7 at 68. Top speed for this ship, it's respectable, 30.9 knots, the same as Iowa, I think, if I have it uh, correct, and the turning circle is a lot better than Iowa. It is near the upper portion of the pack. Finally, a 15 second rudder shift is average and the concealment is fairly good at 14.5 kilometers. It really only gets beat out by those battleships that have the concealment module, some of the British and Japanese battleships. So how does she play? Well, this ship inherently wants to be played at closer ranges. Uh, considering the poor accuracy of the main battery, the exhaust smoke, and the fantastic SAP secondaries, what else would you do in this thing? Especially if you have Roma, then you have both options. Roma, by the way, is a global XP ship right now. You can buy it for green XP for free. But again, if you have both, Roma, you could play her more as a main gun-focused battleship. And then the Veneto, you could play as more of a secondary brawling ship. Overall, I've been trying to find myself getting in close to medium range positions and working from there. That to me is what's fun for this ship. The exhaust smoke generator, it lasts for 45 seconds, and you can either think of it as a get out of jail free card, or to use to sneakily get into positions without getting wrecked. I've found this is especially useful at the beginning of matches where you are trying to get into a flanking position, but of course you inevitably get spotted on the way over there. Simply pop that smoke generator and move out to your flank with impunity. You do have to keep a couple things in mind here. There's a minimum detectability range when firing in smoke, and on battleships it is quite large. The NATO, it's 13.9 on my build. So if you're trying to be sneaky, let off of the trigger finger and you can simply roll through in the smoke and not get shot. That is actually one of my favorite strategies with this ship and the Francesco at tier 6 is to close in pretty close before you get to the guaranteed detection range of 2 kilometers or 2.5 if someone has target acquisition and put your smoke generator on and very simply let your secondaries chew them up for 30 to 45 seconds without firing your main battery. During that time, there's not a lot the enemy can do unless they have torpedoes, in which case you probably shouldn't have rushed them to begin with. Now, worth noting here, we did open up and get ourselves spotted in the smoke, but I felt like we just needed to try to deal some damage and protect our battleship over here. Sitting in the smoke here for 45 seconds <laughs> might have pissed our teammate off as we weren't really doing much to help him as he got rushed by two Bismarcks. So it's kind of a trade-off. If you're taking too much heat, then don't shoot. But if it's just crucial to deal damage, then just fire away. Now, the SAP secondaries. They're fantastic. They can deal quite a bit of damage to enemy ships, although I would say they are less effective at tier 7 than they were at tier 6 on the French Hesco. And here is why. We have two different sizes of shells to look at on this ship, 152mm and 90mm. Now the 152s, they're going to penetrate 42mm of armor, and the 90mm guns are only going to pin 26mm of armor. Now, obviously, the higher the tiers we climb up, the ships become more heavily armored, right? So by looking through armor schemes, we can see what this means for these secondary batteries. 
cruisers and destroyers. They are going to be very susceptible to these shells pretty much across the board, but battleships will be able to shrug off a lot of the damage. Let's take a quick look at two prominent battleships to see why. Okay, tier six. King George V. This is one of my favorite battleships at the tier. It is essentially wrapped in 25 millimeters of armor. So both the 90s and the 152s on Francesco and the Neto, they are going to be able to shred this ship and they will eat it alive. Just like they would a lot of tier 6 battleships and don't even talk about tier 5 battleships. But now that we're up here at tier 7 and legendary tier, battleships become much more heavily armored. Bismarck, for instance, which we brawled with earlier in this game. 50mm deck and a 320mm armor belt. So we were only able to pin his bow, stern, and superstructure. And the bow and the stern we could only penetrate with the bigger guns. Now also SAP shells, they do not set fires. So when they penetrate, they do a good amount of damage. But again, you're going to find them a little less useful than these bigger, more heavily armored battleships. The other thing to note about her playstyle that I would like to point out are great firing angles. Don't feel like you need to sit bow in all the time. One of my favorite strategies with Francesco and with the Veneto is kind of keeping your stern pointed towards the enemies just within secondary range. And with the prop mod, you can have a quick acceleration to kind of get away. Okay, and that brings us back to this game here. Now remember earlier we said the 90 millimeter secondaries found on Veneto could only penetrate 26 millimeters of armor. Well, Azuma just happens to be wrapped in 27 millimeters of armor, so you can see even being well within range and with our secondary consumable going, we're not doing a ton of damage. You know, we're not shredding him. Um, another thing to point out here, when someone is I don't, I, I guess the term is border humping. <laughs> when someone's riding this uh, border wall, it really messes up the accuracy of the secondary guns. As you can see here, we should be pegging him, but it's not even close. I don't know if this is a bug and Wargaming should look at it, but anyways. Overall, I think the Veneto is a pretty fun ship, although I would say if I were playing in a tournament or some sort of competitive mode, this would not be the tier 7 that I would be taking out. I think on the PC, this ship has a big advantage by having SAP main batteries, which are just extremely good at uh, reliably giving you damage. And we do not have that here on Legends. Now, the secondaries are fun. They're good. But like mentioned at tier 7, they are just not as strong as they were at lower tiers. Even though we do get a little bit more range, I don't think the range is enough. I wonder if this is something that could be buffed in the future without making this thing too powerful, um, just giving it a little longer secondary range. Overall, I'm curious what you guys think of the ship and would like to hear from you in the comment section down below. We'll skip ahead to the end here, but if you could leave a thumbs up on this video as that helps out a lot and be sure to subscribe for future content. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.